Hello, this will be a thorough overview of the Scatter 5 add-on for Blender. Scatter has got to be the best Blender add-on for scattering objects around in your scene. It's also a library of high quality nature assets and placing them in complex layouts is very easy with Scatter. If you don't have it, there's an affiliate link in the description. Using this link helps me a lot by giving me a small commission at zero cost to you, so thank you so much in advance for using it. There is a lot to cover with this Blender add-on, so let's get started. When we first download Scatter 5, we have to install it. Go to Edit, Preferences, Add-ons. Press Install and navigate to the folder where we've stored the zip file. We do not need to unzip the file. Press Install. Now search your add-ons for Scatter and check the box to turn it on. Scatter comes with a pretty big library of default assets, really good ones actually, but you can of course purchase additional asset packs on Blender Market. When we expand the Scatter add-on preferences, we have an option for Enter Manager. One of the very first things we want to do is go to the file path here. Copy this file path. It's the default for where the assets have been stored. Then exit and go to the file paths over here. Go down to the Asset Browser section. Press plus to add a new Asset Browser library. Paste the file path we just copied into the file path option and name the library Scatter. Save your preferences. This added all of the scatter assets to a separate library in our asset browser. Now we can open our asset browser somewhere in our workspace. We can choose the scatter library and just drag and drop assets into our scene from here. Also notice there are some materials included. We can drag the materials onto an object and they're automatically applied. This is cool, but of course this is not the exciting part about the scatter add-on. Find the scatter menu in Blender's sidebar and open it. The first thing to do is identify the object we want to scatter onto. In this case, it's this large plane I've added. Go here, where it says Choose Emitter Object. We can choose from a drop-down box or use the eyedropper to select the object we want our scattered objects to emit from. With our emitters selected, we have a whole bunch of scattering options here. Density Scatter, Preset Scatter, Manual Scatter, Quick Scatter, and Biome Scatter. Then we have our tweaking settings and extras down below. The first one is the simplest and most boring of all the options, density scatter. But let's cover the basics with this one and then we'll get to the more exciting ones. Now we've already identified which object is to be the emitter. But the second thing we have to do anytime we scatter is to tell Blender which objects are to be scattered. There are two ways to select objects to be scattered, viewport selection and browser selection. Viewport selection will scatter selected objects in your scene. So you select objects you want to scatter in the actual scene, any objects you want, and you press Scatter Objects. Blender has scattered the selected objects all over the plane. It's of course way too dense, and I'll show you how to make adjustments in a minute. Browser selection is the other option. With this, we select items from Blender's Asset Browser, as many as we want, and they don't have to be only assets from the Scatter Library, we can choose anything. We then choose Scatter Objects. Again, the density is very high. How do we make adjustments to this? To adjust any scatter system, we go down to the tweaking section. Here's a list of the systems on the object. Only one right now, but we can keep adding more later. Under distribution, we see our per square meter is set to 10. Turning this down will thin out the density and vice versa. We can change the seed value for a different randomization or use this clever roll the dice icon. Limit collection will make the scattered objects less likely to overlap with one another. The distribution method is important. It defaults to random, which gives you this random pattern. We can also tell it to clump the objects together, place them per vertex or per face, or place them manually. When we choose manual, we can press enter manual mode and we're taken into a painting setup with a brush. Just click and drag around to manually place the objects. Very useful. Pressing escape on your keyboard exits manual mode. There are a lot more options in the tweaking section that are probably self-explanatory. Of course, you can change or randomize the rotation and the scale of the scattered object. This add-on is so easy to use. In your Blender scene, you'll probably have nearby objects you want the scattered system to interact with, clump to, or even avoid. Check this out. Place the other nearby objects into a collection. Open the proximity tab here. Turning on Cull Near Object asks you to designate a collection. Choose the one with the nearby objects. The system removes the scattered objects from the areas around the objects in that designated collection. And this is entirely adjustable. We can adjust how far away the objects stay. 
we can create a transitional area and have the scale affected based on the proximity. Picture a picnic table in an open field where the grass doesn't grow right up near the table. If we move one of these objects, the system adjusts. This feature is amazing. Another option is the Lean Near Object. Choose the collection of nearby objects. As the name suggests, this has the particles lean into the objects. We can adjust how much they lean, how far away they start leaning, adjust our transitional area, and more. Very cool. There are lots and lots of other features here in the tweaking settings. There's a wind setting where we can easily add wind that affects the scattered objects for an animation. Lots of adjustments we can make to the wind settings. Under ecosystem, if we had multiple systems, we could instruct those systems to either gravitate toward the same areas using affinity or avoid each other's scattering patterns with repulsion. Under visibility, we can choose camera optimization which will only include the necessary elements of the scattering pattern based on where your camera is in the Blender scene. But I'm getting distracted with these adjustment settings. We haven't even gotten to the more impressive scattering options. By the way, please give this video a like if you made it this far. It helps me out a lot. Thank you. So let's start over, but this time we'll choose preset scatter instead of density. First, click this image here with the silhouette character. Here we see many different presets. The thumbnails show us an idea of what each preset scattering pattern looks like. I like the ones with lots of different colors clumped into different areas, but choose one that you like. Let's use browser selection to choose objects from the Blender Asset Browser. This time let's pick a tree, a bush, and some grass. By the way, I'm holding control while I click to select multiple objects. Click Scatter Objects, and we see they're in a pattern similar to what was in the thumbnail. If we go down to the density settings and turn up the density, we see the different objects are packed into their own areas. I'm going to turn on that culling effect I showed you to have the system avoid objects like before. Now we have one particle system on our object. In the tweaking settings under system list, we can see one system, but we can stack systems on top of each other easily. Let's leave that system, but go back to the preset scatter. We'll choose a different pattern and go into the browser to select some moss this time. Press Scatter Assets again, and it adds the moss in a newly selected preset pattern. In the tweaking settings, we see two systems now. We can control the visibility of the two systems. Whatever system we have selected here will be which system settings are displayed and which system settings we would be adjusting. Selecting a system and pressing the minus button deletes the system. But wait, there is still more. Under Preset Scatter, we have Manual Scatter, which is kind of what we saw earlier. You select some objects, press scatter objects, and you're taken into manual mode. There are a lot of different tool settings. The dot setting adds one random object per click. The spray setting is what we were doing earlier, but there are a lot of other options to play around with. I'm not gonna spend a ton of time on manual, but it's definitely a great feature. Quick scatter is next, and this is a group of different scatter methods that I'll cover really quickly. Click on quick scatter and a pie menu opens. Manual scatter is the same thing we just looked at, Quick Scatter seems to just add a simple density scatter system to be used as a starting point. The Image Mask setting opens an image mask where we can paint the desired density of our objects. White will be dense, black will be empty, and grays will be somewhere along the spectrum. It's a really nice feature. Bezier area allows us to quickly draw areas of scattered objects. This is pretty handy. V Group Mask is for using vertex paint to place objects. I haven't really played around with this, but on this four vertex plane, it's not gonna do much anyway. And the next option is what we've all been waiting for. Biome Scatter. Open Biome Scatter and click Open Biomes. This window opens and check this out. Each of these thumbnails shows us pre-built systems called biomes. We literally just click one, give it a few seconds to load, and just like that, we get this. It's added multiple systems for us from the Scatter Asset Library. Choosing another biome, will add that biome on top of the first one. With no additional asset packs, Scatter 5 has a lot of these pre-installed. Very, very cool. There's an extra section that has some advanced things that I don't understand. But there's a quick displace button, which as long as we have enough geometry on our object, can add displacement really fast. We can export system settings we've created to be new biomes. Very nice. So I was just about done with recording this and I realized I forgot a few important features. This will be really quick. When you have a system, there are tools for you to creatively remove or cull parts of that system. 
Let's take this system and scroll down under the tweaking settings to find culling masks. You can do this by vertex color or group, but I'm going to jump to image. Press plus to create a new image. Hit OK. Then press the paintbrush icon to start painting areas where you want the objects removed or thinned out. Bezier area is another culling tool. Select it, press plus, and then the paintbrush to draw an area where objects are completely removed. Upward construction calls the objects anytime something in a designated collection is above an area. So here, nothing will be placed directly below the objects in this collection. And there's a material slot option so you could choose to have the objects not scatter in areas where you've assigned a certain material. And one other area I forgot to mention is the abiotic settings. Open abiotic and we have different characteristics of the object that can affect where the scattering occurs. Elevation allows the elevation to affect where the objects are. So you could only have stuff growing at higher elevations or have them transition away as the elevation increases. By the way, these density sliders allow you to have the empty portions be more or less dense so it's not just all or nothing in your scene. And these double arrows are for reverse intensity, which flip-flops whatever setting it's next to. Instead of elevation, you can have the slope affect it, so maybe you only want objects where it's flat or where it's not flat. I'm trying not to bore you with every single setting, but you can see there's a lot of control you have over each of these. Orientation is really cool. You can have the objects scatter only on parts that face a certain direction. You tweak the direction with this trackball here. For every one of these, you'd probably want to play with the scale and transition settings, by the way. There's an option to have the curvature control the density, and you can choose concave or convex. Lastly, the object's border can be what affects it. There are just a ton of controls you have to get your system set up exactly as you want them. I am probably more satisfied with Scatter 5 than I have been with any other Blender add-on. It was well worth it for me. I'm not sponsored to make this video, but I have a Blender Market affiliate link in the description. Using that link to purchase Scatter gives me a small commission at absolutely no cost to you, and it is massively appreciated. It's one way I can afford to keep making these videos. I would love to have you as a subscriber, and please say hi in the comments. Check out Scatter 5 on Blender Market, and thank you so much for watching. Stay creative.